When their eggs hatch, female crabs normally set their larvae adrift to take their chances. But here, there are so many hungry mouths ready to devour them that this crab holds on to her larvae instead. They bypass the free swimming stage altogether, turning straight into tiny crabs, tucked snugly within the safety of her shell. Though she is willing to protect her young with her life, she cannot guarantee their safety when her own. In nature, any course of action entails some risk. Even sex is not without its hazards. This is a lek, a cluster of tiny courtship territories which females visit to select a mate. In the spawning season, male flashers come up from deep water to display in these arenas. It's like Muscle Beach, as the males show off their pectorals and pelvic fins. They display to attract females and impress neighboring males. To have any chance of breeding, they must shine out in the crowd. Females choose the most brilliant flashers, so there is pressure to display in the shallows where there is more light. The males flutter on their sides to reflect the light and to catch a female's eye. But it's an evolutionary gamble. Often, it's not just a female's attention that is caught. With feeble fins, bilious skin, and piggy eyes, it's not much of a looker. But in its own way, it's stunning. It's an electric catfish. It uses its muscle power not for speed, but to generate electricity. It needs to get in close to knock out its prey. Each time it convulses, it delivers a shock. The victim has no defense against a 300-volt jolt, although some cichlid is probably working on it. The electric catfish has little fear of predators itself, but an otter has yet to be born that can knowingly swim past a fish. It is eight days since the emperor spawned, and their tiny fry are now free swimming and hungry. It's time to go. It is the moment the mob has waited for. The next few minutes will be the most dangerous in the tiny fry's lives. Despite the marauders, the fry must stay close to their protective parents. Perhaps one in 10,000 will survive to return and breed as an adult. Then, suddenly, the attackers disappear. Something has enticed them away, something which unites the cichlid empire. The emperors watch as the schools of cichlids gather, awaiting the coming feast. This night, millions of sardine fry will leave the safety of the rocks and make a mad dash for deep water. They have been hiding since they hatched, but tonight they come together in a huge school, smothering the reef. Only luck and the weight of their overwhelming numbers will see them through this gauntlet. However specialized cichlids have become in the past 10 million years, for an hour it is forgotten. They all revert to the habits of their opportunist ancestors, which colonized the lake so long ago.
the readiness to take advantage of opportunities is a defining feature of cichlids. The ability to create their own is even more so. The emperor's fry need not run for the relative safety of the deep. They are escorted by devoted parents who will protect them. The bonds between parent and tiny offspring and between male and female are part of the genius of the cichlid line. Lake Tanganyika, jewel of the rift, is as deep and blue as the African sky. Beneath its waves hide its living gems. Blessed with a talent for adaptation and capable of extraordinary parental care, these little fish are doing what their ancestors did millions of years ago. They are gambling for immortality. They are the latest chapter in an ancient saga. The next generation of little fish in deep water.